Back to Newsnight. Now, BBI and talk of constitutional reforms is seemingly the note on which the year will end and a new one begin. Well, today, ODM leader Raila Odinga told Kenyans to prepare to engage with the Building Bridges Task Force in 2020 as they explain their report to Kenyans and engage in what sounds like a fresh round of gathering public views. This report, launched by the BBI, has not only elicited mixed reactions, but also left many puzzled by its many unknowns. And so the big conversation continues even here right now on Newsnight, where we host Honorable Junet Mohammed, Minority Whip in the National Assembly, and Suna Ismail Member of Parliament and Honorable Jeremiah Kioni, the Chair of the Parliamentary Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee and Member of Parliament for Daragua. Gentlemen, welcome to Newsnight. Thank you for joining me tonight. And before I uh, pose the question to uh, my guest here in the studio, this is what you're saying online. Albert Alango Magoro says, just fine tune the original BOMAS draft and implement the TJRC report. Okay, that's one tweet. Another one here from Limo Kibet Samuel. The same group that gave us a half-baked report after consuming 10 billion has been tasked again to fine-tune a report that they failed to deliver. What kind of a country is this? And uh, do we have one more? Okay, Sydney says required political heat since the perceived opposers had changed minds to support it. The only way to continue the circus is to start another round <laughs> of uncertainty. <laughs> Okay, let's get reactions from my guests here in the studio. Honorable Jeanette, I think it's only fair that I start with you. The last person there to SMS has called it another round of uncertainty. My question to you is why this fresh round of sort of countrywide tours, a public gathering of information by the BBI task force? I think uh, what is happening is uh, the BBI report came out as expected. You know, the task force did their report and told Kenyans uh, what they have collected, the views that they've collected from Kenyans, and what ails Kenyans. Mm -hmm. But I think the second phase, according to my understanding, is not collection of views per se, is a conversation on the report that was brought by the BBI, engaging Kenyans based on the document that they produced. You know, the BBI task force was expected to, 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 uh, to give Kenyans a report, which they did. So it is now upon Kenyans in this period to discuss that report and come up with the implementable actions from the report. So the, the issue is the implementation, not necessarily the contents of the report, because you've used the word conversation. Yes. And in my book, conversation is two-way. And some would say that that's just another round of gathering views. No, no, no. You see, there is a report that has been produced by Correct. the task force. We have to discuss that report. After all, they did not collect the report from all Kenyans. They collected from uh, different, they went to all counties, but they could reach out to a certain uh, group of people. Mm -hmm. Now it's that the time when all Kenyans will have an opportunity to discuss the report that has been produced by the task force. That is how I understand. 48 million Kenyans, will they really be able to reach all of them if, if that's the sort of threshold you're, no, you're using? No, if you're patriotic enough and you mind about the business of your country, mm -hmm. it, is your, it is your responsibility to create time and you know discuss because this is something that is going to affect you in one way or the other. You may not have all the insights into the mandate of the task force moving forward, but when does this end? Uh, you know, is it an indefinite period? Is it wide open? Uh, because, uh, and as I said in my intro, there's definitely a lot of uncertainty about the way forward. I can't tell you definitely when it will end because I don't, I'm not part of the task force, but I presume that uh, this should be a short period of conversation on the report, mm -hmm. on what Kenyans feel about the report, whether it has captured all their views, whether it, uh, they have captured their aspirations, whether it has captured what they thought ails the country, then from there we now move to the next level of uh, implementing the report at Stoa. Let me allow Honorable Kioni to come in on this. Honorable Kioni, your thoughts even as the BBI's term was extended, and do you share the same concerns that a section of Kenyans share? Um, let me say that I belong to that uh, part of the divide that uh, quite doesn't understand uh, the meaning of this extension. And I think we have to be very careful. We have to be very, very careful because uh, we can easily fatigue Kenyans. I think uh, the report that was released by BBI was well received. And many of us, uh, including even uh, some of us in parliament, expected us to, full, to move with full throttle mm -hmm. uh, to implement the, the document. And uh, since they has, the Kenyans are very suspicious of one another, my fear is that uh, this extension of period will just allow for more suspicion and necessarily politicking. 
uh, and uh, having gone through the report because I've read it, uh, there are issues that are implementable and can be implemented uh, immediately without even going back to Kenya. And for example, is like uh, the issue uh, is of... Is that the way you would have preferred the conversation to sort of progress? My thinking was that uh, what we needed to do immediately was to go through the report look at issues that needs to be implemented by the executive without the need for any legislative agenda, look at the issues that require uh, acts of parliament, uh, look at issues that require constitutional amendment that can be done through parliament, look at issues that require constitutional amendment through a referendum. And um, that way, I think we'll have won the confidence of Kenyans because we will be seen to have been faithful to why it is that uh, we commenced the, the, the issue of BBI. And I must say that it, it was a very, it's a very good initiative that we need to support, but we have to be very, very careful. We shouldn't uh, be seen to be hesitating or delaying it or being doubtful of anything that perhaps we started. What is your greatest concern? Before I allow uh, Honorable Jeanette to respond, what is your greatest concern with my, the extension? My biggest, my biggest concern is whether we actually have agreed on how we want to implement it. And um, I think there is another fear that is uh, within political circles that um, elected politicians may be kept out of uh, its implementing. And uh, there is a need to understand why that kind of fear. And perhaps even the better thing is to try and uh, deal with that fear because implementing a document of that nature, implementing a document that has such fundamental uh, changes to our way of doing things in the country, including the governance of this country, uh, is uh, best if done, uh, while there is also full involvement of those who have been elected to various positions of, um, in various uh, uh, organizations in this country. Okay, okay, Honorable Jeanette, you uh, can respond to those concerns. Yeah, you see, uh, Waiga, you know, different, Ken different uh, Kenyans give different views in that report, and hence it is important we give all now all Kenyans time to discuss the report and critique the report and give their, you know, their final view on the report. And you know, as in accordance with the current constitution that we have, public participation is a very, very important element in the, in the governance of the country. Mm -hmm. So when you have a report of this nature that is going to fundamentally change a few issues in the country, it is very important that this report is as much as possible made a people document where people are given enough time to engage in and critic and review it if possible. But what we have already, so, what we have already is a people's document, and the fear that we have coming, uh, we are we are told that this report, the, the new report, is likely to come out in the month of January, is that you may end up with another report, which, which and this we will January now, we will now be left in a situation where we are discussing two reports and we don't even know which one to to implement. Just that clarify, is the fear, cla and clarify that, Honourable Kioni, which J January 2020? No, no. You see, we, we have we have an extended period now, mm -hmm. and uh, the task force has now uh, even taking it from my colleague here, uh, Jeanette, is that uh, they are supposed to go again and talk to the Kenyans again, so that they, the Kenyans can explain. Um, what they already had said is like we, we we must not we must be seen not to doubt whether the the BBI actually did what we expected, and whether we are uh, telling see, them to do see, something else see, they may mm, not have done. You see, where you go. I think it is important that we allow um, this document to move on as we thought as Kenyans. You see, not come in. On. You know, yes, Wahiga, the, 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 the report belongs to Kenyans and it was done by a task force by a task force appointed by the president. And it's the same task force that is engaging Kenyans again. It's not a different party. It's not a different group of people. W what are the it's deliverables? It's the same task force mm -hmm. that wants to now e reach as wide peop wider people as possible. Because, the, you know, some Kenyans gave their views, the ones who could get an opportunity at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Now, we were, the, 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 the document is being subjected to a wider now audience by the same task force. But I so don't I don't whether, think I don't there will be uh, two reports or three reports. Mm -hmm. What is what we have is what we are going to get from the same task force. Uh, if you go through so the, if they bring, hold, hold on, Honorable Kioni, let Honorable yes. Jeanette so, so finish. Whatever mm -hmm. they bring out this type, the same task force, I presume it should be the final report now that Kenyans will make a decision on. Tell me this, Honorable Jeanette, what stopped the BBI team from reaching all those Kenyans that you're talking about in the first round? I think because of, uh, I think maybe their mandate was for one year. You know, they had limitation. The task force was given mandate for one year through a gazette notice. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had limitation of time. They could not reach as w wide people as they wanted. Now they have a second opportunity to subject the same report to the same 
to, to Kenyans now who maybe have not gotten an opportunity in the first instance. So, so who, I think mm -hmm. whatever report they bring now should be enough or good enough that it has uh, enough public participation and uh, Kenyans will in the end decide also whether they agree with them or they don't agree. Okay, Honorable Kioni, you can I see. I, see uh, I don't know whether my colleague here is seeing the danger that um, uh, what he has said is opening us to. Uh, a situation where we are likely to see people, and I can tell you, I did my presentation in a place called Old Kalawi in Nyandaro County. Mm -hmm. I was the only member of parliament who went and presented from that county. What we are likely to see is now that we have this document and uh, the thinking of Kenyans have been captured by it, we are likely to see another line of people who missed, not missed, who just did not care to go and do their presentations when opportunity was given. And I can tell you there was adequate opportunity at our Karao. And now they will go with a, another set of uh, uh, demands that will just make it difficult for us to achieve what we wanted to achieve through this uh, good initiative of BBI. I know the president means well for this. I know the prime minister also means well. But I am not sure that this uh, decision to extend uh, the term of this uh, task force will serve as well. So in your view, no further round of quote-unquote public should, participation should, is necessary at this time? And you know, there will never come a time when public participation will be said that it has been done to the 48 million Kenyans. It will never happen. There will always be uh, you know, a sample that will always do it. My thinking was we should now be laboring with how do we implement. And I can tell you, even as we now look for this um, a new loud of, I hope not uh, public participation again, uh, we already have started implementing it, implementing it. When we say that we have to be concerned about the conflict of interest, that is one of the recommendations of BBI. So we are implementing it. We are implementing well, it. Well, I haven't had anyone directly referring to that as implementation. But I have read the document. I can tell you from a point of knowledge that that is contained in that document. And we, ha we have already started implementing. The AG is doing the law. He was directed when the president gave his speech at Jamhuri Day. But then I wonder why do we then need to go back and look like we are rewriting this document. It will just uh, bring more confusion and unnecessary confrontation <coughs> given the way we are suspicious Hon of Honorable Junet, Honorable uh, Kioni uh, seems uh, to be taking time. Let me ask you this, Honorable Junet, even as you respond to what yeah. he said. What has been ODM's view on the document? You've had a chance as a party, and I know it was part of your discussions today uh, during your meeting. What would you say is your ge the general view of ODM towards the document that we have so far? No, we are, the ODM is, for, is okay with the document that we have so far. Anything that you'd like changed are, or they amended? Are, no, they are, they are nothing much. We are happy with the way it is. Mm -hmm. But you see, it is Kenyans to decide whether there should be amendments or not. It's not us as ODM. We are just part of the society. We are just a political, and we will give our views to the task force if we are given an opportunity as a political party. But you see, there is no harm in the task force exercising their mandate, if it has been extended by the president, to get to reach out to more Kenyans as much as possible. You see, the BBI, the, 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 the task force in their report said they could manage to reach to 7,000 to 9,000 people in different counties. Maybe this time they will reach out maybe to another 10,000. That will enrich the report. It will be the more views from Kenyans. So the same, the people who are being engaged in this second phase are still Kenyans. They're not engaging people from another country. So whichever report comes, whatever comes from Kenyans, at the end of it again, the Kenyans will have a say on it. They will decide in one way or the other whether they agree with the task force report or they don't agree with it. I don't think, and the, the point that uh, my colleague is talking about of implementation, it will come, but it will come after Kenyans have decided that this is what they, will, they agree with what the task force has produced as a report. That is the only time we can start implementing. We cannot implement a report which has not been subjected to Kenyans' decision. These are views that have been collected from the Kenyans. Once they decide by the Kenyans themselves through, maybe if need be a referendum or something, is when now you can implement a report. Otherwise, I think what the president was doing of the conflict of interest was part of his administrative work that he feels that uh, his, his war on corruption is being, you know, limited by conflict of interest. Briefly, so he, he wants to address that. Tell me this. We've I don't think from, was that he was implementing the BBI. We've heard from a section of leaders who are concerned that it is the same team carrying, this, carrying out sort of this uh, further round of, of, of gathering of views. 
uh, and some of them felt that, that other people could have been involved, uh, a so-called committee of experts. What are your thoughts on that, Honorable Junette? That this time round, more Kenyans could have been involved in the collecting of views and the sort of shortlisting what needs to be taken as a priority. You, you see, th th this process belongs to the task force as they have been given the mandate mm -hmm. in, in law, but through a gazette notice. So it is up to them, to de they will decide as a committee what kind of experts they want to engage. It's, up, it's their decision. We can't micromanage them. Would it not have been more inclusive if you brought in more church leaders, more experts? And we've had people speaking about this. this, what, this. what church leaders? They, that task force, when I looked at it, they have three clergymen. Some of them are bishop. Zachariah Zokoth, an archbishop. Mm -hmm. uh, they have, a, 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 they have a, the chairman who's a Muslim. They have a, Reverend Njenga. They have Bishop in Matthew. They have... Uh, somebody also is close to the church. So I think the, the, the religious people are fully represented in that task force. We don't need to bring any more religious. We are not forming. In we a nutshell, are, you have full confidence. I have extremely, 100% full confidence in the team because they mean well. Their first report was inspiring. I hope they will do a better job this time. And let's give them time. Whatever report they bring, the final decision will be made by Kenyans. Okay. Honorable Kioni, I want to also, also get your thoughts on this. I know that at some point your committee had planned a retreat to Mombasa to look at the report, but then that retreat was hardly cancelled. Are you able to share with us why? We've had some sort of explanations, but we'd like to hear it from you. Uh, by the way, that was not the first. We had already gone through the report and we wanted to continue um, appreciating what the BBI team had done. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that when we are engaged even in this kind of a discussion, you, are, you talk about it from a point of knowledge, not uh, guesswork, not uh, through what you have read from the newspapers, but something that you have read yourself. And that's why I can confirm here without um, uh, any fear of uh, contradiction that uh, the issue of conflict of interest is well covered in the document. And I can tell you that is one of the key things that require to be implemented. And I'm happy that the president has already taken upon it to implement because it does not require uh, parliament. It does not require, uh, it requires parliament if the law is to be done. But even, even if we were not to pass the law, we already have that requirement in the constitution. It requires the executive to, uh, to do what uh, the BBI report is uh, telling us to do. In other words, the, it requires the executive to implement that part of the constitution, which has not been implemented uh, since the 2010. But let me, let me also say this, that uh, the, the, in the statement that has just been issued by or said by my colleague, that uh, he said that uh, there isn't much that needs to be added to the report. That choice of word much is the one that we have to be very careful about. Because there are those of us, um, perhaps I don't belong to that category, who will then be asking, what is this that was not captured, mm -hmm. that so and so wants it captured now? That needs to be dealt with that suspicion needs to be dealt with. And I can tell you, listening what, to what politicians... Are your, what are your suspicions? You listening, speak as listen, a man with... Listening to politicians, mm -hmm. they think that there is something that was not captured from some quarters. And when I read the document, everything, uh, including what some of uh, my colleagues think was not captured, uh, what, what was not captured, was actually captured. And the issue was, are we dealing, how have we dealt with the executive? And if you read the document, the document has uh, captured the executive we were including the, the expanded executive in a manner that has already received acceptance. So we, I am saying this, uh, Wahiga, mm -hmm. we have to be very careful. A good document was produced by BBI. If implemented the way it is, it will take this country very far. If we mess it by looking like we are hesitant to move to the next stage, which Kenyans expected, which was implementation, then we will only have ourselves to blame if we lose the good in that behavior. Hon Honorable Ky Kioni, do you have any theory or suspicion about the, the match that uh, I'll tell you. Honorable uh, I'll tell you was talking of? One of the things that uh, I, I can tell you is that I didn't even know that um, uh, my colleagues in ODM had a meeting. And it's good that uh, parties meet. But uh, it will be very, uh, it starts uh, becoming jittery if we, are, we, are, we could, if we read it in between the lines that perhaps it is the, the reason why we are taking it back to January so that we can capture one or two three statements that may have been left out by a particular quarter. And I wanted to say this, it actually, even what they may want to add could still be good for this country 
but you cannot it's not in vacuum you have to deal with the with the feelings of Kenyans and we need not lose what you already have okay we Is can it, lose it by know. just a Wahiga. statement on about net go ahead see Wahiga, the biggest threat this document this process is facing uh, are politicians they want to hijack this process and turn and you're speaking here as a, as a politician as tonight. a politician yeah they warning they, kenyans about about politicians who are trying to hijack this process midway let me tell you this document belongs to the people the views were collected from the people and it is good manners to return the document back to them mm -hmm. and so that they can see if what they have said have been captured properly by the task force secondly there is no harm in collecting views from Kenyans if they have anything to say. Okay. So what, that because that what I am seeing, because what I'm seeing, it is Kenyans who are giving the views. What I'm seeing, there are certain caliber of politicians, including my colleague here, who want to guard Kenyans. Why do you want to guard Kenyans? If they want to, 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 to speak on this report until cows come home, so be it, it is their document. It's not my document, it's not your document. If Kenyans want to still interrogate the document, it's up to them. So why are you guarding Kenyans that you have said enough now? Honorable it's not a television show Honorable where you have 45 minutes to express your views. Mm -hmm. yeah, it Honorable, is Jeanette, a Honorable Kioni has hinted at the dissatisfaction by some in the political class at the executive and the way it's tackled in the BBI. Does ODM share any of those concerns, possibly with the strength of the post of prime minister? You know, this document does not belong to ODM. Okay, but I, I am asking you a question here, you representing ODM. Yeah. Have there any concerns about the framing of the post of the Prime Minister and the powers they will have? ODM will give their views on, those, on that matter at the proper time. Maybe they have given their views initially at the sitting. I don't think you could share that. The task force. Mm -hmm. That we will, we will, ODM will give their views as a political party. But what I want to say is let's not gut Kenyans for our selfish political interest. Let Kenyans speak. Let Kenyans say what they want to say. Let Kenyans give their views, whether it is today, tomorrow, January, February. After all, in the end, I have said, and I've repeated many times, the final decision will be made by Kenyans. <sighs> if you bring to them things that they have not said in the report, they will reject it. Oh, I, let, let me, let me, let me just to give it, my colleagues will so, allow me to say this. I don't this, think, eh? I don't that, think um, in conclusion yes, that and conclusion, we, should, yeah. we should say that this document is good, that document is bad, that decision can only be made by Kenyans and not by politicians. And, not by and politicians. I wanted to say this. Yes, I wanted to say this. One is that I'm above um, that level of characterization that we belong to this document or this group or the other. I am beyond those, uh, uh, those groupings. I speak as one, as a person who has been given a responsibility within parliament, and two, as a person who has gone through this process before. And I know why we lost the 2005 uh, and even the earlier drafts. It is because we kept moving back and forth and allowing suspicion and mistrust between ourselves to take center stage. My fear is this. Up to where we were, mm -hmm. after the day we were at Bomas, the country left with a, a, a relief and saying, finally, we have a document that we can now implement all of us. How do we ensure that we don't lose that goodwill from Kenyans going forward? And my fear is an extension, not for purposes of devising an implementation uh, mechanism, but for, we, for a reason to go back and receive another set of views. That, I say it, not because I have any, any beef with the uh, ODM. I agree with the, their, their desire to say more, but the issue is that um, <laughs> if you now say more, you will be feeding into the machine that is waiting to say, we told you this document was not enough. They, they did not capture what ODM wanted. Okay. We cannot allow them to say. So we are just going to waste our time and likely lose that issue. And I, I, I hope my colleague will see uh, and stop looking at me like a person who is opposing it. I want this document to implement. I am keen on having a prime minister in a, in a, in a way that is okay. acceptable by, by us. But we are going to lose including that particular one that we already have proposed in, uh, in the constitution. Okay. If we start having this kind of approaches. Uh, thank you, Honorable Kioni. Honorable Junet, 30 uh, seconds. What's yeah, your last word on this? No, Higa, what I want to say is that mm -hmm. you see the views that have been given by ODM does not necessarily mean it's the, views of, it's the views of Kenyans. Kenyans have to give their views on their own. And Kenyans must be given an opportunity, an ample time, to decide what they want for their country. And that is why the task force, 
is going back to Kenyans so that they can take back their report to Kenyans okay. so that Kenyans can see whether their views have been captured properly. You, Let politicians you not are, gag Kenyans. You okay. play, it is the same politician. Let me finish. It's the same politician. Let's finish. Yeah, it's the same politician. Yeah, it's the same politician who mutilated the bombers draft at Naivasha. And that's why today we have these problems. Please, politicians like me and others, let's give Kenyans time Thank to you. decide for their country. Thank you, you are playing that's into the hearts of the individuals who want to kill this document. Okay. I am, I am be asking of you, please don't play in the hands of politicians who are waiting to kill the document. That's the last you word. You are doing very well Thank by you. having what you Honor I can't keep giving you last words, both of you. Thank you so much. Honorable <laughs> Jeremiah Keone, of course, the chair of the Parliamentary Constitutional Implementation Oversight Committee, Member of Parliament for Ndaragwa, together with Honorable Junet Mohammed, the Minority Whip in the National Assembly, and the MP for Suna East. A conversation that you can expect to carry on into 2020. Well, we'll take a quick break right now on News Night. I'll be looking at your feedback a bit later.